So let's move on a bit to data analysis. Uh, our data was reduced using a Python pipeline to calibrate uh, our data into both absolute vectors and also relative vectors. Now, we calibrate the data against the SDSS DR9 stars, and we also took a lot of care trying to choose some very, very good stars. That would include many choose from between 10 to 16. However, we try to keep on the bright side of the, uh, of the scale. And also, we also use only the PSF magnitudes in this case. And then we will try to keep at least 10 stars to the end of our calibration of both zero point uh, reference stars and comparison stars. We will try to use at least 10 stars. We also take care to filter our bad stars. That will include stars that are not present during our observation job, the whole observation job, and also possible variable stars. We take them out. And as we all know, SVSS, uh, the photometric system, is due to RSC. However, PA's filter is BBR. So we used uh, photometric conversions from Lockton 2008, 2005, and just 2005 to convert the magnitudes. Now, after we have obtained the cross correlate, I'm sorry, the uh, light curves, both broadband and narrowband, we, we would use cross correlation to obtain the time lag between the two signals. This time lag is directly proportional to the broad line region size by a factor of C, speed of light. Now, now that we obtain the, the broad line region size, and we use the spectra that we obtained before, uh, the supermassive black hole mass is also defined by the uh, biotribute, which is m equals RBLR sigma square root g. Uh, the RBLR is the uh, time lag size that we got, and the sigma square is the uh, velocity dispersion. Uh, that would be defined from the, you get that from the spectrum. Now, f, that is just a constant. A lot of studies in the past would take this as unity equal one. However, recent more studies from 2008, for example, I'm sorry, 2004, for example, Hawking, et al., that would take it as 5.5. This depends on the kinematics and also the shape of the broadband region. There are a lot of studies on this right now. Now, I would like to talk about the results we have so far. So far, we have obtained approximately 160 epochs of data. And from 160, we have 150 that are very good for our calibration. And this data spans over 300 days over the past year. And we have a cadence of this data approximately 1.9 in B band. Um, also in B and also in R2. And this is the um, absolute photometry like curve that we got okay. Oops, I'm sorry. Uh, could I press the button to open it again? Uh, thank you very much. This this one. So we would have the okay. We would have the B like curve on top, the V and R and narrow band right here. Uh, median magnitude that we obtain is 14.62, 14.61, 14.03, and for narrow band is oxygen 3 minus continuous 0 0.64, 0 0.42. Um, the scale here is offset for ease of seeing how to change. Now, the typical errors we obtain for R and V is approximately 0 0.02 magnitude. However, for V band, is a bit larger than 0 0.04 and 0 0.06 in some cases. Now, although the uh, broadband data was quite good, quite satisfying, the narrowband data doesn't actually show anything. So we move to related calibration. Um, this is a close up of the absolute V curve. You can see some half values here, and also another peak getting up here. Now, this void here is because of the uh, sun was near our object during the yearly annual, annual, re annual regions. This is the related life curve. Now, the difference that we see, especially in the narrow band, is that we could start to see more valleys and hills up in our data. Um, we have our V data and V data and R data here. The medians are approximately the same, 14. For R is a bit brighter at 13.89. The thing is here is that the amplitude of the change is 0.61. It's, that is quite larger than we anticipated. 
So right now we're also still looking into this to see if our calibration has some problems. And then now that we obtain, I'm sorry, here is also a related relay curve more into the uh, details. You can see here. If you remember, if you remember the uh, absolute relay curve, you would also see this value here. Now, now that we obtain both narrow band light curves and the broad band light curves, we use cross correlation to cross correlate both together. Now, here we obtain the time lag between both light curves of 30 days, right here, this peak. Now, this directly gives us the size of the broad band region as 30 plus minus 5 days. That's good for us right now. We move to the screw mass that whole mass. Using the spectrum we obtain, here's the HB lines, oxygen free. We also obtain a velocity dispersion of 789 kilometers per second, uh, and a super massive black hole mass, which is roughly 39 million solar masses. The star of this work is actually this plot. Um, there is a mass, I'm sorry, there is a VLR luminosity relation for HDN equations. Now, this is a power law that basically states that the, rate, the time lag, the radius of the Borat region, and the luminosity is a power law with a power of 0.5. Now, we use data from Bensky et al. Uh, 2009 to see how our data compares with theirs. And here we actually see there's this blue. Uh, they have fit the data with a uh, power of 0.519, which is the red line. We actually find that our um, time lag, which is a, the red dot here, fits right into this line. And also is comparable to their uh, estimation. This is kind of surprising for us. Now, I would like to bring to the conclusion, which is that we believe that PROM8 can do photometric preparation mapping. And in our studies of this quasar, we got the of h beta about my region size of 30 light days velocity dispersion of 789 kilometers per second, and also a mass uh, of 38, uh, 39 million solar masses. Um, I'm sorry, this, this slide is, has an error. So this is also in agreement with some previous studies that we have done. Um, that study is Shoes ETAL 2010. Uh, however, there are a lot of loopholes in this study. First is that the eight epoch spectra that we, we got to, in order to con confirm the photometric time lag, wasn't able to do it. We weren't up able to obtain the spectroscopic time lag. So right now, our future work is also to, to get more spectra, to pin down this method. Now, when that is possible, we are also trying to collect more photometric data right now to better estimate the raw radiation size. And also, since this is just a test using one quasar, we are trying to also expand this process to our whole quasar sample, which is approximately 150 quasars with a redshift of 0.3. Um, and if possible, we will try to obtain a RBOR algorithm using our data. I would like to thank you so many people. Uh, Nari, NLJ, Kathy, uh, Nath, uh, North Carolina, Shafi Hill for the top eight. Uh, John Go University, Stack Overflow, and Google for helping with my program. And so many more. Thank you very much.